Hello and welcome back again. Today we're going to talk about uh, JP Morgan Chase, a well-known bank. We have talked about banks before, the latest one being Goldman Sachs, I believe. And banks are a little bit tricky to assess because they are not your typical companies. They are institutes that provide liquidity, they provide debt. And so they allow people to borrow money from them, thus they have uh, a lot of uh, liabilities. And so if you try to take a look at the financials, you will notice that they have uh, a lot of a lot of potentially negative values that you would uh, uh, you would associate as a, a negative thing if you were looking at a typical company but over here with banks things are different because you cannot really use this kind of metrics like the cash flow for instance uh, you know to make us assertions of of, uh, of what the company is going to be doing in the future or how well they are actually doing now it doesn't work like this because they are again debt leveraged they're using a lot of debt, it's their operations. And so we have to find a different metric. We have to have different metrics in order to assess how good a company is compared to competition and compared to the assets that they have and the amount of money that they make and everything. And so I think a very, very cool way to examine how a company behaves is uh, a, a bank, a financial institute really, is um, to associate and correlate it with the price to book ratio that the company has. So we associate the price. We, you will see here that we're using the historical chart, the historical chart here, which is basically the price of the stock, and you will see it in these uh, candlesticks over here, the, the blue and red ones. This is the price of the stock, and then on top of it, uh, there is a plot uh, which is the price to book ratio, and the price to book ratio is a metric that tells you how expensive it's, a stock is and a company is based on the assets that they have, and so the assets that the company has could be the, um, its um, cash, could be its buildings, its equipment, all sorts of things that are tangible stuff. And so um, actually the assets are not all of them tangible. You can use the, the tangible book if you want to get all the tangible assets really. But uh, for this situation here, I'm just using price to book. You could use price to tangible book and be a little bit, a little bit more uh, you know, specific with tangible assets instead of uh, assets that are also intangible. So what are we looking at here? So you will see that the price to book ratio here is plotted and you will see that on the X on the Y axis over here. And um, it has reached uh, two, uh, two X at some point, a little bit more than two X. Right now it's hovering at around 1.6 over here, as you will see. And it has been constantly around this level uh, over here, uh, 1.6. And um, let's take a look at the old chart over here. Uh, which shows us the maximum amount of time that we can uh, uh, we can reach uh, to over here. And uh, you will see again that the lowest that they have ever been in terms of price to book was uh, 0 0.4, which is obviously a fantastic buy over here. Uh, or anything less than 1 really is generally speaking a fantastic buy. Why? Because when you have anything less than 1, it means that the price of the stock is less than uh, the price of the assets. And so when you have uh, 1x, it means that for every $1 of, uh, of uh, stock price that you pay to, to purchase one, one stock, you are actually getting $1 back in terms of assets of the company. And so anything below 1 means that the company is undervalued, generally speaking. And for, for these kinds of companies like financial companies, we really want to be taking a look at the, um, at the book value. Again, just because they are very dead leveraged and we cannot really judge from financials, really in most situations we can t and we should take a look at them but uh, they can be misleading so this is why we're using a metric of that sort and what we want to be doing when we when we are looking into entering one of these companies we want to be purchasing it purchasing the company when the price to book ratio is as low as possible obviously and when typically the, the price of the stock is lower than the price to book ratio that's generally speaking a good idea you see that when the price when the price was actually kind of lower or very similar in a very similar level to the price to book ratio over here the company stock price tended to move higher now it's um, the company has been obviously trending a lot so it, it keeps moving higher but the price to book ratio keeps increasing as well making it a little bit less desirable uh, as um, you know as it keeps increasing and so if we take a look at a different company, a different financial institute, let's go back to Goldman Sachs, for, Goldman Sachs, for instance. Um, you will see here, it's exactly the same concept. And let me put all here, it's all already. So you will see here, it's the same concept. When the price is actually lower, 
than uh, the price to book ratio we kind of wanted to buy over here and then this was preceded by uh, uh, this was actually uh, preceded by some um, stock, uh, some value of the stock going uh, going up and then at some point when uh, when the price to book ratio started going down the price was going down with it but you see they're on the same level and this is all these kind of levels here are potential good uh, purchases because the company is going down there is a little bit of a downturn downtrend but the company stock price is actually at the same level or even lower than the price to book ratio over here and then when it starts going higher it starts being a little bit more overpriced and the more high, the higher it goes the more overpriced it is now that said for goldman sachs the price to book ratio is, is at 1.2 which is uh, better for a foreign investor because they're getting more money for their back for the price that they pay for the stock and uh, similarly we can take a look at let's say bank of america uh, let me find Bank of America here. Same thing. We are taking a look at the Bank of America, another financial corporation here. And um, typically, you see again when the when the price of the stock is uh, below the price to book ratio, it tends to go higher. And when it uh, the price of the stock tends to go up, uh, 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 more tends to grow higher than the price to book ratio, then the whole, the price of the stock tends to go down till it kind of uh, becomes at a similar level, comes comes at a similar level, and kind of. Uh, diverges with um, the price to book ratio over here as you can see and so Bank of America for example for instance has a 1.5 uh, price to book ratio it's uh, similar to JP Morgan really right now and so of those three Goldman Goldman Sachs seems to be the better buy in terms of uh, price to book just because say, you're actually getting more for the amount of uh, dollars that you pay to get to purchase stock for the company you get more assets now, let's take a little bit of a look at the company's um, uh, income statement here. And uh, let me select uh, JP Morgan, because that's the company we're examining, not Bank of America. First off, actually, let me take a look at um, the overview of the company, just to take a quick peek at what the company is doing in terms of outstanding shares. That's a, that's a very nice thing to see. They're actually purchasing shares back. And um, yeah, they're getting, they're getting back some of their shares, so that's very nice to see. It means that your stock is actually worth more now, the like ones that you already held, were holding. And so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And the one year gain is 12%. So that's, that's all fair. And uh, the price to book 1.7, as we saw, 1.6 to 1.7, was around that level. And the company is also paying a dividend. So let's take a look at the payout ratio over here. And uh, that's actually a very important met metric, especially for companies that are financial companies that are paying dividends. Because you can kind of see what kind of, uh, uh, you know, how, 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 how they can actually make their payments and if they afford to make their pay, uh, to, if they can afford to make their payments going forward. And so 25% is very, very fair. Anything below like 40 to 50% is generally speaking fair. And so this, is, this, is, this looks like a very, very nice uh, payout ratio over here. And um, let me take a little bit of a closer look now at uh, the income statement. And... Uh, this load takes a little bit of time and I'm taking it back to 2017 to 2022 get a little bit closer so a little bit of growth here actually substantial growth over here so that's not bad at all to see and uh, let me find the net income of the company uh, 24 billion to 48 billion doubled its net income in uh, almost four years or here four to five years so that's pretty great to see as well the company is doing well now the balance sheet of the company, which is very very important for especially for these kinds of for every company, but especially for these ones, from 220, 255 billion to 294 billion, and that includes all the dividends that they have paid over the years, all the liabilities, everything really, and so that's pretty nice to see, and not too much additional paid in capital, obviously, just because they are not issuing shares really, they are actually buying back shares. So cash flow. Cash flow over here, and uh, what I mentioned earlier, you can, you can, and you will see massive declines over here. Like you will see 80 billions in the minus. But again, that's something that you cannot really take into close consideration because it's about debt. It's a bank, so you you should be expecting that. That's very very normal. So I I, I wouldn't give, pay much attention to this to, the, to this one over here. And investing, the company is still investing, which is nice. A, a lot in securities, typical for banks, and. Um, I'm expecting to see some some plus over here, yes, and um, a lot of debt, <laughs> obviously, 
I mean, uh, yeah, the comp companies that handle a lot of debt, uh, you, ca you can find all sorts of discrepancies of that sort. A lot of debt issued, a lot of debt repaired. I mean, you expect that, right? It's a bank. <laughs> so you cannot pay too, too much attention to these things. You are, it's actually a positive thing, more than likely, that this is a positive. While if you, if you saw this kind of value in a normal company, you'd be like, what? <laughs> What's going on here? And you'd be right. But over here, it's not the same with a bank. Same for cash flow. I mean, cash flow is exactly the same, the same concept. You cannot really use that for a bank because a lot of debt that's, that needs to be serviced and a lot of cash flow going out, many massive outflows that are going to be retrieved back over the years. So you cannot pay too much attention on that. And um, if, you, if you take a look at the solvency here, it's actually not even reported, but this is another thing that um, you can... I'm actually not sure why it's not reported at all over here. But um, this is another thing that can, can potentially not be super beneficial for you because, again, it's all about debt here. So, um, what would I do with this company? If I were to purchase one of the three, like JP Morgan or uh, Goldman Sachs or Bank of America, for example, I'd probably go with the lowest uh, price-to-book uh, ratio. However, I do like the fact that they are paying a nice dividend and they have a very low payout ratio. So while I think that uh, maybe Goldman Sachs is a little bit better, a better buy for your for your money, uh, I don't think you could necessarily go wrong with owning a little bit of JP Morgan. Although I would like to get it at a better price to book. So if I could get it at a 1.2 or 1.3, that that would still be a little bit more than what I would want to get it for, but much much better. So um, that would probably constitute a drop of like um, 20 to 30 bucks, I suppose which would be a little bit of a better value. But still, I mean, even if you buy it over here, you will probably do well over the over the years. Again, it's a little bit overvalued over here, I believe, based on the price to book. But um, it's probably a fair addition to portfolio, especially on an income-based portfolio, one that wants to reap some benefits, uh, some dividend benefits over the years. So that's what I wanted to talk about uh, in terms of JP Morgan. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you may want to take a look at this video that I made about Shopify. Interesting one, I believe. And um, if you haven't joined, you may want to take a look at our Discord channel as well. You can find a link in the description box below. And I'd love to see you join us. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.